In this part, I will show you how we can use Google Collab in order to improve the training session, make it much more faster. So, uh, for in this example, uh, I use the standard uh, Python uh, programming based on the uh, Spider platform in order to uh, training the dog versus cat image uh, by using the pre train model. So as you can see from here, so this is the, the basic code uh, for this training session. Uh, I will use the VGG model and then the VGG model will be fit to our models, to our convolution neural network models. And then uh, we start doing the training session. So basically, if you see from here, so we are at uh, approach number 3 over 10 and then yeah still uh, doing the training session so uh, this is uh, when you perform the training session by using the CPU uh, sometimes it will be a bit lag or it will take a longer time in order to complete the training process so one of the steps that you can improve the training session is by using the Google Collab which is the free GPU that you can utilize in your training session so we show you the uh, simple example on how you can uh, set up your uh, Google Collab notebook. So I will provide to you this link. You can try later on. So this is uh, some simple step uh, on how you're able to do the training session uh, using the Google Collab GPU. So basically, when you open when you open the Google Collab, you will see this uh, interface. So basically, uh, first thing first, uh, you can see your notebook settings in which either you use the GPU or TPU. Uh, TPU is based on the Tesla architectures and GPU is the standard graphical processing unit, which is the parallel processing. So you can just save the model. So just make sure that your notebook is connected. So once your notebook is connected, you will see the uh, icon of the RAM and this in the uh, top right side of the notebook. So uh, this is a step by step. So the first step is uh, once you connect your uh, Google Collab, you need to make sure that it has access to your Google Drive. Google Drive in which uh, your data set will be say will be stored in the google drive and then uh, during the training session uh, google collab will read the data and then uh, perform the training session so uh, the first step is you need to connect your google uh, collab to the google drive so basically i have created my folder in google drive named google collab and then under the Google Collab folders, I have a dataset folders in which uh, I have the training, uh, testing and validation dataset. So in every dataset, I have uh, two type of data. First is the cat and second one is the dog. So this is a sequence of the image that was stored in the Google Drive. So uh, first thing first is that uh, we need to connect our Google Collab to the Google Drive. So you can straight away connect that thing by uh, pressing this button. So usually we'll be given some link in order to copy your authorization code and then paste it back. So uh, once you paste that thing, uh, so you will see uh, some status that stated that your Google Drive is connected. So in this case, my drive was actually connected to the Google Collab. So uh, I will move to the next step. Uh, the step number two is uh, we need to fade our directory that we have created. So I've shown you that uh, I have created the directory of uh, in Google Drive. And then uh, in this content, so for the directory, if you see from the left side, so basically it will start your directory of the Google Drive in the Google, uh, Google Collab notebook will start with the G Drive. So G Drive folders and then uh, My Drive. My Drive is your uh, root of the Google Drive folder. And then you can uh, 
press this button in order to connect your uh, directory to the google collab so this is my drive so uh, if you see from here i have directory of google drive collab notebooks and then data set so just go to the club notebooks and then data set so once everything is connected uh, you can actually browse your google drive folders in the left side of the column notebook so this is the second step so the third step is uh, just creation of the directory of your validation data set and uh, training data set so uh, I just move on to the next step in which for this step uh, we just fit the bgg uh, structure to the models and then uh, let's run uh, in step four uh, you have two options either if you don't want to use the uh, pre-trained model you can select uh, this first model construction uh, if you want to use the pre-trained uh, you need to press this uh, step number 14 and 15 command so uh, i will use this model so let's say in step 14 once i execute the model uh, you can see the the whole structure of the bgg architecture here and then later on we can uh, fit the model the pre-trained model to our structure architectures so that uh, you see this is the, the whole summary of the system in which in the first model we have the bgg and then uh, later on uh, we flatten the bgg output um, before we fed the dense model which is uh, dense model number four and five so uh, step number five is it's just the same simple process in which you just pre-process the data uh to the tensor uh before we start the training process okay i will show you uh how fast is the training session in contrast when you use uh, just cpu to perform the training session so we will use uh, almost the same setting uh with respect to our spider uh cpu setting so let's start the training session uh sometimes uh when you first starting the training session it will require some time to read the data maybe it will be a bit longer but afterwards once the data was actually fit to the collab uh, notebook so everything will be much more faster in order for you to repeat every training process so if you can see from here for every step here the step number one it takes around uh, 21 seconds in order to accomplish a task so if you compare with the cpu so first step uh, second step uh, in average it takes around 500 seconds to execute the training process so just uh, wait a bit so if you have a lot of data or you need to train that thing using a longer approach or different training session so sometimes you take a bit longer but most of the times in general it will be much more faster uh, in comparison when you use the cpu so you can see from here in average it take took around uh, 20 seconds in order to complete every task if you compare with the cpu CPU in average around uh, 500 seconds in order to uh, complete the training task. So we have around uh, five steps left in order to accomplish the training session. So I can just put the thing uh, side by side for you to see the difference uh, between the CPU training and uh, GPU training using the same data uh, using almost the same configuration with the pre-train of the BGG. 
so gpu is almost complete while uh, for the cpu it's still halfway in order to accomplish its task Okay, so uh, we almost finish training the training session uh, using the GPU. Okay, now uh, it's already completed using the GPU while CPU is still uh, struggling to complete uh, half of the task. So if you can see from here, once we perform the uh, training session, uh, so in average, the, the highest validation accuracy is around 90% for this training session. So you can uh, retune the models by using different pre-train structure, or you can change a bit in terms of the parameters of epoch, uh, step or epoch, bash, and etc. And also apart from that, you can also uh, perform the data augmentation in order to ensure that uh, your train data will be much more richer compared to the original one. So basically once everything was completed, the training was completed, you can uh, simply see the out of the training session uh, by EZQ step number seven. So basically this is the, the whole training session, the plotted data uh from a Porsche zero to ten. So thank you.